Is the private debt jubilee or modern debt jubilee one of the ways? Yeah, out? that would work. I mean, I, I proposed the idea of a modern debt jubilee back in about 2011, I think. And I haven't really updated it ever because I never thought it'd ever be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I'm too dizzy with too many other bloody projects right now, but I, I want to write that up at some point. I've done a, a simple model of that on my Patreon website. How would it work? Would, it's quite simple, exactly the same way a deficit works. You give people, in fact, I can bring that, I've actually got that simulation. Again, I'll see if I can just uh, find that quickly. So what you'd have, and the, the idea of a modern debt jubilee, an old fashioned debt jubilee just basically, you know, shot the, shot the landlords or, you know, shot the debtors. Uh, shot the shot the creditors rather um with the old jubilees when they happened this is where michael hudson and the late lamented david graver were the experts those jubilees liberated people from household debt but not um not commercial debt mm -hmm. and they eliminated the debt completely which freed people from being debt slaves today of course we have people who borrowed money from banks and gambled and i'm calling them uh debtors so they're down here and you have people who didn't borrow from banks and gamble i'm calling them savers mm -hmm. now with a modern debt jubilee, you'd have the government making a cash injection into the accounts of debtors and savers on an equal per capita basis. So everybody would get exactly the same amount of money. The hypothetical amount I'm using as an example in the book I'm writing right now is $100,000 per adult over 15. And if you did it in America, that would generate slightly over 100% of GDP increase in credit in, in, in fiat based money, but you would then say the debtors have to use that money to pay their debt off. This is the bit here. So they, they the Jubilee, they, the, the debtors get Jubilee underscore D and they've got to use that money to pay their loans down. So mm -hmm. what happens is there's no change in the amount of money. What you get is a drop in the amount of, of debt based money and mm -hmm. an increase in the amount of fiat based money. Mm -hmm. And then savers get exactly the same amount of money and with savers, uh, what I'm doing modeling here is say, if you didn't want to create any additional aggregate demand out of giving that money to savers, you could require them to have to buy shares of firms and the firms would have to use that money to repay their debts. So that in that way, you'd simply, you'd, you'd do t several things. You'd, you'd replace credit-based money with fiat-based money. There'd be no change in the money supply, but it would be more based on, on fiat than on credit as it is at the moment, which it should be. We've made a mistake in letting banks create too much credit-based money. Mm -hmm. uh, there'd be no disadvantage for people who didn't gamble because the ones who did would pay their debts down, but the one who didn't would get the capacity to buy new shares. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, And the firms would pay their debt down. So we'd reduce the level of excessive leverage that firms have as well, which neoclassical economists are also responsible for. Mm -hmm. And then the interest on those, you'd sell bonds to finance it. Well, you don't finance it, but you'd, again, the same old story, the banks would get excess reserves out of it. You'd mm -hmm. offer them jubilee bonds which would pay them an interest and the banks would get the compensation of an interest payment on the money used to create the Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And that would compensate them for losing the income out of money to debtors and out of money for um, firms. So the consequences would be you wouldn't destroy the financial sector. You would give them an independent source of income provided mm -hmm. by the government to fix the whole era up. You would have the, set, the savers equity would increase by the value of the jubilee they got and the debtors were up here would increase the amount of money would not change pardon me they would um well you know they, you know, they get an increase in equity but it mm -hmm. means a swap off of uh, a reduction in their debt level but yeah that would be the way to do it and we'd have a more fiat based system less credit and a more effective economy and until then um since you've mentioned the hole that uh that covid dug for us. Yeah. Are we doomed to deflationary environment until we kind of get out? Yeah, that's that's the real problem. I mean, if you think another about Japan what's happening from the 90s. Uh, sorry. Well, another Japan from the 90s. Similar. Yeah. I mean, if you look at again, looking at Japan, Japan was the canary in the coal mine that should have told us how this cooperated. And we completely failed to learn the lesson from Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they've been stuck in ever since is deflation until they've reduced their private debt level from about 225% of GDP, which it was in between 90 and 95, and 175%, which it is now, 160%, I think. And, and that took them 30 years of stagnation. You know? So I think we face something like that because our governments are just, you know, unfortunately, led by economists who've had uh, a frontal lobotomy by learning neoclassical economics. Thank you.